Good day. Thank you for tuning in to this 2017 General Election Candidate Forum for Tumwater City Council Position 6. The forum is presented by the League of Women Voters of Thurston County and TC Media. The League is a nonprofit organization that encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in their government. The League neither supports nor opposes candidates or parties. We are nonpartisan. The League registers new voters, studies issues, and advocates for its positions with the governing bodies. Despite its name, the League is open to both men and women of age 16 and up. I'm Mary Moore from the League and I'll be moderating this forum. The candidate for Tumwater City Council position six is Debbie Sullivan. The other candidate is not participating in the forum. For this forum, the candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement. Then I'll ask questions. The candidate will have two minutes for, um, to respond to the questions. There will be one minute for a closing statement at the end. We'll begin with an opening statement from Debbie Sullivan. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity that the League of Women Voters provides for candidates and to help inform the citizens of our community on what uh, the candidates are doing. So thank you very much. Uh, my name is Debbie Sullivan. I am currently a Tumwater City Council member running for re-election. I would like to say that I am very proud to be able to represent the community in the city of Tumwater. I've been endorsed by a multitude of government and civic leaders, including Mayor Commit, several of the Tomato City Council members, including Neil McClanahan, uh, Council Member Hill and Swarthout. I have also been endorsed by uh, several of the uh, other community leaders, including the county treasurer, Jeff Gadman, the Thurston County Sheriff, uh, John Snaza, and also County Commissioner Bud Blake. I've been endorsed by the Tumwater Firefighters and other organizations and, such as the Olympia Master Builders and the Thurston County Realtors. I believe I bring a broad variety of experience to the Tumwater City Council. I have been a business owner. I have worked for a large corporation uh, and, such as Intel Corporation and I currently work for state government. I've also been very involved in nonprofit organizations. I'm currently serving as chair of the Inner City Transit Authority Board. I am vice chair of the Community Action Council, Lewis Mason Thurston. So, and I'm also, before being on the council, was also involved in the community, including working, uh, volunteering my time in search and rescue with youth groups such as community youth services and on junior achievement. So I bring this broad experience to the council and I find that it's been very useful in helping me make my decisions. Thank you, thank you. Now are you ready for your first question? Thank you. What do you see as the two major challenges that will impact Tumwater in the next four years and how do you propose dealing with them? Well, some of the areas that we're dealing with is uh, development, especially uh, business development and economic development. We are growing quite significantly recently and we have actually acquired the new Toyota dealership, which has been very beneficial to the city of Tumwater. Uh, so I think we're starting to see some infill and some growth. We've closed up several great projects uh, since as, such as the Brewery District and the Tumwater Boulevard uh, redevelopment. So we have a lot of uh, infrastructure set up for that. And recently we have now started building ground on the uh, craft center, which is going to be for the, by the brewery, the new development that will bring in a partnership with South Puget Sound Community College and uh, the brewers to train brewers, distillers, and uh, also have incubators. That project is going to definitely give us back our identity that Tumwater has always had. I think we, the next uh, thing that will be challenging to us is keeping up on the population growth and making sure that we have smart growth. 
homelessness, uh, people that uh, are finding it difficult to make, um, uh, being able to stay housed is a major impact to our community. Tumwater has taken huge steps, I think, in making sure that we continue to increase our housing stock whenever possible. And we have done things like uh, creating zoning for mobile home manufactured parks so they can't be redeveloped without a process. Uh, we've done now zoning for cottage housing and multitude of other types of housing stock so that we can make sure we keep our inventory and also creating. We've also uh, discussed um, uh, tax credits for larger developments if they provide um, low income housing. Thank you, thank you. Your next question is as follows. Tumwater continues to experience growth. What is your vision for how Tumwater should grow? Well, before I was on the city council, I was uh, spent 10 years on the planning commission. So I've uh, watched the evolution of how we're uh, planning for our growth. And I think what we've been really smart in how we've zoned different areas and we continue to maintain flexibility as we see issues. For instance, we never uh, really anticipated the pocket gopher issue in certain areas. So now we have that that we have to do mitigation and some other things. So uh, we try to do um, we try to do uh, upfront development. We try to do as much SEPA reviews, try to provide um, the best amount of balance we can for developers and those individuals that want to come in and develop it to know what they have. We're trying to make sure that our zoning is stable uh, and it, it matches our vision and meets the needs of the community and our citizens. Thank you. What are your budget priorities for Tumwater in the next four years, and how do you plan to balance that budget? Uh, we have taken a very active role in, uh, in our strategic planning to make sure that we have uh, all of the things in place to make sure that we don't have things that are not in line with what our potential budgets are. Uh, we need to make sure that we continue to provide all essential services. That would include fire police, our roads, um, utilities, those kinds of things. We need to make sure that those are always uh, at the uh, top notch and uh, available to our citizens. Um, one of the things that we've done in the past when we needed to was the Transportation Benefit District. Uh, we went to the voters and they've overwhelmingly uh, responded by approving that by over 60% of the vote. So we have a reputation of keeping our um, commitments to our citizens so that when we do need to raise taxes for whatever reason and need to go back to the voters and ask them for additional things, they um, believe what we are going to do. So we, I don't foresee budget issues at this time because we are growing. We now, you know, as I mentioned earlier with the Toyota dealership, that will bring in a lot of additional revenue. Uh, we have, uh, we'll probably see better growth in the Little Rock Road sub area, which is by Little Rock Road. And now that we have Taiyi Drive all the way from uh, Trosper Road to uh, Israel Road, that will help with our transportation. And uh, we, as you've, many Tomato residents have seen, we've done a lot of paving projects this year. So uh, we are making sure that we're spending wisely with our budget and making every dollar stretch as possible. So. Mm -hmm. Good, good. It's interesting. So Debbie, what is your position on charging developers the full cost of new public facilities, including schools and libraries to serve their developments? Well, they have an impact on our community. And, um, you know, that that's one of those things that are a really hard balance to make because you want to have development. You need to be able to uh, maintain the structure of, of schools and libraries. A lot of those are within other taxing districts that we don't always have control over. Uh, but what we want to do is make sure that those kinds of costs don't get uh, so large and those bills don't get so large that it starts 
increasing the cost of housing. So there's a definite balance there of how do you meet the needs of making sure that those things are done, like uh, you know, park impact fees and other types of fees that go into development, and yet maintain the cost of affordability for housing. So it's, it's a balancing act, and for those that we have influence on, we try our best to make sure that they stay reasonable, you know, they have the sewer hookups and multitude of other things. So it can get very costly for development. Uh, and then if you start getting into, that's one of the things that we've been trying to do, is if you get into things like SEPA reviews and those kinds of things. So we try to do as much upfront as possible and uh, help uh, mitigate as much of the cost as we can. But unfortunately, those, all those items cost money and uh, so we try to do what we can at, with the ones that we have control over. Okay. Well, now your last question, Debbie. How specifically would Tumwater benefit by having you on the City Council? Well, I uh, have done well working with the uh, mayor and the other uh, council members, and I have sat, I'm have i sitting on currently on boards in a leadership role, which helps uh, bring Tumwater citizens a great representation. So again, sitting on Inner City Transit Authority Board, being selected by the fellow uh, uh, board members as their chair, uh, sitting on the Community Action Council, Lewis Mason Thurston. I also sit on the General Government Committee for the City of Tumwater and also on a pension board for the City of Tumwater. So my experience being on the Planning Commission, there's a depth of uh, knowledge that I have on history of a multitude of things that have happened. And also my private um, experience being in government, uh, being in private industry, small business owner, and uh, almost a 20 year resident of Tumwater, I'm very vested in the community. So I hope to bring all of that experience and continue to uh, maintain and build additional positive relationships. Well, thank you. Now you have one minute for your closing statement. Thank you. So I am finding it honor and a privilege to serve the citizens of Tumwater and I look forward to carrying on that uh, my responsibilities and my commitment to my community. And I'm asking for those citizens of Tumwater to consider me when they go to the, uh, to the polls on, or mail in your ballots, because we do it by ballot. And, uh, and uh, hopefully they will support me and I'm asking very much for their vote and I want to move forward and continue the great work that I believe the city of Tumwater has been doing at this point. Thank you for participating in the League of Women Voters primary election forum for City Council, Tumwater City, City Council position six. We encourage viewers to vote in the general election on or before November 7th, 2017. The League particularly thanks TC Media for their ongoing support and assistance.